And welcome back to the program. I am joined now by Connor Eldridge. He is a former banker. He is still an attorney. I think you're a former banker. And he's a former U.S. attorney for the Western District of Arkansas. He was even the Democratic nominee for the U.S. Senate in 2016. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. What are you doing now? I'm practicing a little law and finding ways to make a difference in the state. And uh, appearing on the show here. We'll talk right. a little bit more about that. Uh, I want to go first to uh, Federal Judge G. Thomas Isley passed away this past week. Um, for those who did not know him, why was he so important, not only to the Arkansas legal community, but to the political community as well? You clerked for him. I did. I worked for him in 2003 and 2004. Uh, he was just a great man, the epitome of a fair and impartial judge. And when you look at a career in Arkansas, he died at 94, started as a Rockefeller Republican, got active in politics with all the injustices that took place when, during that era, and that led to him being a federal judge. And he, day in and day out, did the right thing for 40 years on the federal bench. And that's important. Sometimes federal judges make headlines, but most days they're just there trying to do the right thing, and nobody did that better than Judge Isley. He is somebody we ought to all look up to, and, and as we uh, who are a little younger, try to try to take on the challenges we have as a state. He provides a, a great inspirational model. Yeah, he was a quiet leader too. I mean, in terms of didn't grandstand, didn't look for um, the headline. As oh, that's right. He yeah. he was very Humbled. understated. Yeah. Uh, really didn't want the spotlight, and and just uh, did the right thing every day. And he's certainly a hero of mine. You have a uh, moving tribute to him on our website at talkbusiness.net. I would encourage everybody to go out there and take a read on that. It's a, it's a good recollection of his life and your time with him. Uh, let's move to another fair and impartial person, at least by reputation, and that is uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller. Uh, obviously, big breaking news on Friday, uh, talking about the Mike Flynn uh, plea, I guess, is what it uh, amounts to here. We have seen this week in some of the reporting President Trump using his powers of persuasion to try to shut down um, an investigation at the congressional level. From what you have seen publicly, do you think there's an obstruction of justice case out there or do you see it being constructed pretty solidly? Well, certainly I see a, a full and fair investigation taking place and that's critical. I mean, let's take a step back. We know that Russia sought to interfere in the election. No one should dispute that. The president has from time to time, but the objective facts and the intelligence is that that took place, there was a plan. We know that the Russians met with the Trump campaign on at least a couple of occasions. So shouldn't we, Republican, Democrat, or otherwise, want to know what the heck happened in our election just because we should as a country in order to protect our country. And so to me, that's the, the nonpartisan takeaway that we ought to check against all the partisan, you know, uh, this side and this side sort of painting their the narrative. The spin that's going around. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but what happened, you know, on Friday with, with the Michael Flynn plea is very significant. First off, you know, Mueller was proceeding to indict him with the grand jury, cancel grand jury testimony um, because they reached an agreement. And that, that agreement is to one count of lying to the FBI involving the December 2016 statements that Flynn made about the Russian sanctions. This is the na incoming national security advisor who has now reached a plea deal, has cut off communication with Trump's lawyers, and is cooperating with Mueller's investigation. This is significant. Mm -hmm. And we can count on Bob Mueller to get to the bottom of what happened and to do it in a fair way. Um, th this, is, this is not and shouldn't be a witch hunt. It should be about finding the truth. And, and that's what every good prosecutor does. That's why I love being a prosecutor, and I'm, I'm confident that the special counsel is going to do that. Again, just knowing what you know, what you have seen out there in the public domain from reporting, from uh, interviews, from things that have been released related to the investigation. We've seen Paul Manafort has, uh, has been uh, arrested and indicted. You've, again, you've got Flynn on some financial uh, charges that are out there too that is not part of this conversation right. on Friday. This could get to more collusion or financial transgressions, I guess. Do you see some things shaping up that would suggest, you know, bank fraud, money laundering, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act? Do you think that's where Mueller is going to go? And what does that mean from a prosecutorial standpoint? Well, he's certainly looking at the money trail, and that was clear less in the Flynn indictment, which has to do with lying in, in December of 16, and more with Manafort. You see basically with Manafort an elaborate money laundering scheme to, to have foreign money that was undisclosed either in 
uh, necessary disclosures, required disclosures as a, as a foreign representative in this country, or in required foreign bank account disclosures. So you definitely have a financial component to this. The big elephant in the room is did anyone on the Trump campaign know of Russia's significant attempts to influence the election. We have laws in this country, uh, election laws designed to prevent foreign influence in the election and certainly designed to prevent foreign uh, collusion with a campaign. I don't think anybody, unless they're in the special counsel's office, has all the facts to make that determination. And those that go on TV and say they do, uh, don't. So I think that's why they do the investigation. That's why we have a process. That's why we have the rule of law. And again, I'm confident that uh, that Bob Mueller is going to get to the bottom of that. It's not going to be concluded by Christmas, though, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Despite and, and the president can say as much as he wants yeah. that he wants it to go away, but it's not going to, and it shouldn't. As a country, we deserve to know the facts of what happened. Uh, so, uh, you will have to be sensitive in answering this next question, but we have seen some FD, FBI investigation of the state legislature. We have seen a, uh, um, um, charges brought and even a plea deal up in northwest Arkansas with State Senator John Woods, with Representative Mike O'Neill. What should we be watching for? How long might that window be open? When can we expect to see some results from that investigation based on your experience? Sure. Well, you're, you're right. I can't comment on this specific case because it's been going on a long time. And, and I, you were I, I in certainly the overlapped as you, U.S. Mm -hmm. Attorney from uh, August of 2015 prior to that. And so I'm not going to get into the specifics of this case. Um, but I can say that we, we do have a trial starting on Monday. And I certainly know and have appeared before Judge Brooks a number of times. I think he's a, an incredible and great judge. Um, he's going to preside over a good trial and make fair and just rulings. Um, my former first assistant, Kenny Elzer, is going to try the case, I understand. And um, Kenny's going to put on a good case and do a great job. And so, you know, I think we can have confidence that the process is going to play out in a, in a fair way. And, and, you know, I know and have seen firsthand um, in other cases and in my experience, the, the sheer integrity of those two. And, and so I know they're going to get to the right result there, More too. More dominoes are going to fall, though, you predict. I really can't get into that given, given my involvement right. in that investigation. All right. What's next for but Connor? But I, I would watch it for a while. All right. What's <laughs> next for Connor Eldridge? There's maybe a Senate race next year. Well, you know, there's going to be some constitutional offices. You next know, I've, year. I've lived in Arkansas my whole life. I'm going to continue to be here. Uh, you know, I'm going to raise my kids here, and I'm going to continue to look Plans for ways for running to. Running for office now. I'm going to look for ways to get involved and continue to make a difference right. in Arkansas. That's all we're getting out of Connor Eldridge today, and we got to wrap up the show. Thank you for being here, my friend. Thanks, Good to Roby. see you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for today's program. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time.